Okay, you asked for it. No, we didn't. Okay, well, someone must have wanted to watch this. Listen, it may appear that Apple's new 15-inch MacBook Air is exactly the same as the 13-inch MacBook Air. You know, you're probably just saying, just the MacBook Air with a bigger display, Apple told us it has the same chip. It's all the same, right? Well, there's actually some real world differences you need to know about that may actually have you picking the bigger laptop, even if you prefer the smaller display size of the 13 inch MacBook Air. Because believe it or not, despite having the same M2 chip, this 15 inch laptop might just have a performance advantage. So let's go over all the differences between the 13 and the 15 inch MacBook Air. And the first difference is obvious, but I gotta go over it because some people can't tell their left from their right, okay? So yes. I'm gonna spell it out for you, right? The screen size on this is smaller. It's a 13.6 inch display, and this new 15.3 inch model obviously has a larger 15.3 inch display, right? Uh, but, you know, even though those numbers seem relatively close, you might not know that the 15.3 inch model is roughly a 23% increase in overall screen area, and that does make a big difference. You have a pretty sizable amount of display area, which not only lets you fit you know, more apps on screen comfortably, but also lets you work more comfortably in professional apps with more room for toolbars and graphs. Besides that though, the displays are identical, right? They both have the same pixels per inch, uh, the same brightness ratings, and the same LCD display quality with support for the P3 wide color gamut. Now there are some trade-offs and advantages though by picking the uh, smaller or the larger model, right? The biggest advantage that the 13 inch model has is, well, it's obviously more portable. It weighs less at just 2.7 pounds compared to the 15 inches, 3.3 pounds, and the overall dimensions are smaller than the 15 inch. So this laptop, the 13 inch model, takes up less space in a bag or on a cafe table, but credit where credit is due, right? Even though the 15 inch is larger, it is still very portable for a laptop. And there is just a small increase in overall thickness on the 15 inch model, but Apple claims that it's still the thinnest 15 inch laptop ever. And it is pretty thin. This is pretty lightweight and pretty portable for a 15 inch laptop. Now. One thing is that the trackpad on the 15 inch is larger than what is offered on the 13 inch model, which I guess is kind of, you know, personal preference. I mean, honestly, they're, they're not that bigger, but I said I'd list all the differences. So there's plenty of room on both trackpads to scroll or do all of the uh, Mac gestures. Now, one difference that's not really that obvious when looking at both of these laptops is the speaker quality. Now it's strange because you look at both of these laptops, you see that they both don't have any speaker grills on the side. And I think it would be fair to assume that both of these speakers are gonna sound the same, or at least they both have like the same number of speakers in them, but that's not true. The 15 inch MacBook Air, because it does have uh, the larger body does actually have more room for a better speaker system than the 13 inch model. The 15 inch MacBook Air is equipped with a six speaker system while the 13 inch has a smaller four speaker system. And there is quite a difference in the speaker quality between both of these devices. The 15 inch is not only louder, but it provides more clarity and less distortion at higher volumes and has a deeper bass than the 13 inch model. <laughs> speaker system on the 15 inch is actually pretty good. And it was better than I was expecting uh, for a MacBook Air. So it might be one of the reasons why you wanna pick up this model uh, besides just having a bigger display. There's, there's better audio quality in this laptop. But let's give some credit to the 13 inch, right? You might wanna opt for this one because it has an extra uh, SKU that you can order that is cheaper. It has a lower eight core GPU option that is not available on the 15 inch model. So this eight core version is actually $200 less than the 15 inch model. So if you don't utilize GPU performance, this can be a tempting savings if you don't care about the display size or the speakers and you'll save $200 by ordering that base model. Then you can spend that extra $200 of savings on upgrading something else, like maybe more memory or more storage. Now I know what you're thinking, even though both of these laptops can be outfitted with the same M2 chip with the full 10 core GPU, does the 15 inch MacBook Air actually have a performance advantage because it is larger? And at first you might think no, because both of these laptops don't have a spinning fan inside of them, but, there's more to that. 
So let's look at a simple benchmark like Geekbench, and we can see that the 15-inch Air actually does manage to score just a bit higher in single-core and multi-core performance, but it, it is pretty close. It's well within the margin of error, and these scores make sense, right? Geekbench doesn't hit the processor too long, and the M2 chip in both of these machines should perform pretty similarly for short burst workloads. Uh, so we see that play out in this test. Same for the GP, right? This is the GFX benchmark. It is a pretty optimized benchmark and it doesn't run for that long. And we can actually see that both of the scores are pretty similar. And actually the 13 inch MacBook Air actually scores a tad bit higher in this test. But there is a chance that the 15 inch may have a performance advantage for a sustained workload where the CPU is working overtime for a longer period, let's say longer than 10 minutes. Thankfully, we can actually test that with a more intensive benchmark called Cinebench, which can simulate a heavy uh, let me redo that, which can simulate a heavier sustained CPU workload over a longer period of time. For this test, we will run Cinebench back to back three times for a total of 30 minutes on each machine to see not only if the 15 inch uh, air can perform better out of the gate, but to see if both of these machines thermal throttle at the same rate. And we can see, even after just running the first 10 minute benchmark, Cinebench on the 13 inch Air does indeed score lower at 7,887 for the multi-core performance against the 15 inch, which scores 8,329 for the multi-core performance, about a 5% increase on multi-core CPU performance on the 15 inch model. But if we run it again for 20 minutes, you'll see that the 13 inch throttles even further down to 7,703 points. Now the 15 inch isn't immune, it does thermal throttle as well, but it's still maintaining a score above 8,000. And it gives us an overall of a 4.5% difference this time on the CPU performance. The final run of Cinebench for a total of 30 minutes takes down the 13 inch even more for thermal throttling and we get an overall score of 7,509 and the 15 inch just scores under 8,000 at 7,999. But this time the 15 inch gets an even bigger advantage, a 6.3% increase in performance over the 13 inch model. So while not a gigantic advantage, we can pretty much conclude that for sustained workloads, the bigger body is indeed better at dissipating heat. You are getting a performance increase on the 15 inch model. It does not thermal throttle as much for sustained CPU usage. You can expect to see on average about a 5% advantage in CPU performance on the larger 15 inch model for longer multi-threaded workloads. But what about GPU? Well, earlier, our GPU test really didn't peg the system all that much, but the GPU in the M2 chip tends to run a bit hotter. So let's run a more intensive benchmark. So this time I loaded up Shadow of the Tomb Raider to see a better sustained GPU uh, benchmark on the 15 and the 13 inch model. And after loading up Shadow of the Tomb Raider and running the benchmark, I was actually surprised that yes, the 15 inch air on medium settings perform better than the 13 inch model pretty substantially. It got 47 frames per second overall versus the 13 inch airs 40 frames per second. And that result is much bigger than the CPU performance. It's actually a 16% performance jump on the 15 inch model. I looked back at my previous video where I ran this on the M2 MacBook Pro and the 15 inch MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Pro uh, running those same benchmarks is just a one frame difference uh, with the MacBook Pro scoring higher, which does have a fan inside of it, right? It's, it's an M2 chip, it's running the same M2 chip, but it has the active cooling solution of that fan. But it's kind of crazy that the 15 inch, even without a fan, was getting very similar performance to that MacBook Pro with a fan, like the performance on the 15 inch was closer to that 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro than it was to the 13 inch uh, M2 MacBook Air. Now that doesn't mean defaultly that every task you do on these laptops is going to perform better uh, on the 15 inch laptop. Um, for shorter bursts, right, the, the speed differences are going to be imperceptible. And for some tasks like video exporting, when I tested this, the media engines on the M2 chip uh, kind of make the performance difference negligible, at least for this uh, 12 minute 4K video export to H.264. The 13 inch was actually a little bit faster on this video export test. Okay, so what's the results of this video? Well, unlike a lot of other versus videos, um, you know, there's really no clear winner. I mean, there is kind of in a way, but 
listen, you really shouldn't overthink it. If you like the idea of a smaller 13 inch laptop, uh, the performance differences aren't groundbreaking on the 15 inch model. Like if you want a smaller laptop, get the smaller laptop. Don't feel bad about it. This is a this is still a great machine and, a, and it's a really, it's a way better value now that it uh, dropped in price by $100. But on the other hand, there are actually some real world benefits uh, besides a bigger screen by going for the 15 inch model. You will get slightly faster multi-threaded CPU performance and faster sustained GPU performance. And the enhanced speakers on this model make this an excellent entertainment laptop for watching videos or listening to music. But those are basically all the differences I could find between the new 15 inch MacBook Air and the older 13 inch M2 model. Let me know in the comments below, which MacBook do you prefer and were you actually surprised in this comparison? Did you expect the 15 inch laptop to actually score higher? I really wanna hear your thoughts about this because I was actually pretty surprised overall. As always, if you found this video helpful, show your support by uh, giving me a like and uh, subscribe to me if you wanna see more. It's late and uh, I'm tired. So you can tell I'm flubbing my words a little bit at the end, but hey, I'll catch you in the next one because who, who else gives you a show like Greg? Nobody. Maybe Max Tech or like Luke Miani or uh, um, all the other Apple YouTubers. Damn it.